yourself and each other. More Americans watch NBC News than any other news organization in the world. Today's headlines can be hard to understand, and a lot of kids have questions, so we started a newscast for them. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Hey, what's up, America? Have no fear. The voice live rounds are on. Direct to your homes. Buck stops with me. I'm the responsible person. Why Governor DeWine got very candid in his daily briefing today as the state continues reopening. Losing an icon of the game, the life and legacy of legendary NFL coach Don Shula, a man who never forgot his Northeast Ohio roots. Unmasking something new, how the face mask is becoming part of our culture's fashion, and how The Rock and Browns legend Joe Thomas are teaming up for something big. From the WKYC studios, this is Front Row. And welcome into Front Row, everybody. Brand new week. Hope your week has gotten off to a good start. Jim Donovan, Sarah Shookman along with you from our remote locations. A busy news Monday, and Sarah gets us started. Yes, Jim. And before we even get to 77 seconds, some breaking news in just the last half hour to tell you about. An appeals court has ruled setting the stage for the release of hundreds of federal inmates in Ohio. Now, this appeal filed by federal prosecutors was denied upholding a federal judge's original ruling. That means 837 inmates deemed medically vulnerable at Ohio's Elkton Federal Prison are said to be transferred, put in isolation, or potentially temporarily or early released. Now, the deadline for the evaluation of these transfer and release evaluations is Wednesday. So we will keep you up to date on that. Again, that's just developing in the last half hour or so. We'll expect to learn more about what that means moving forward. For the rest of today's headlines, here's your 77 seconds at 7. Governor Mike DeWine got candid at today's briefing. He said while he supports the First Amendment rights of demonstrators opposing his coronavirus policies, some are crossing a line with his appointed officials, including Health Director Dr. Amy Acton. So when you don't like the policy, again, you demonstrate against me, uh, that, is, that is certainly fair game. Uh, but to bother the family of Dr. Acton, uh, I don't think that's fair game. I don't think it's right. I don't think it's necessary to get your point across. Manufacturing, distribution, and construction can resume today as part of the governor's plan to get the economy going again. While office workspaces are also allowed to reopen, DeWine strongly advises that anyone who can work from home continue to do so. Today marks 50 years since the Ohio National Guardsmen opened fire on a protest at Kent State University, killing four students and injuring nine others. It was one of the most painful moments of the Vietnam War era in this country and in America. American history. And the NFL has canceled plans for five international games, four in the UK and one in Mexico City. This comes as the league is making plans to move ahead with a fall season. As things reopen here, now we're expected to hear about restaurants and salons in just a few days, Jimmy, and I know we are all curious about the sports world. And you're starting to hear a little bit about what the NFL has planned, starting with canceling those international games. Yeah, that's a big move, but a very safe move. The Browns could have been involved in that move, and I'll lay that out to you. There were four games scheduled for London, one for Mexico City. So there were five international games. Those are all going to be brought back stateside. Now, where the Browns come in there, the Browns are scheduled this year at some point to play the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it would be a Jacksonville home game, which will now happen in Jacksonville off the news today. But originally, Jacksonville plays a number of their games in London. They have an owner who was involved in sports over in London, the owner of a Premier League soccer club. So there was an opportunity and a chance that maybe the Jacksonville game with Cleveland could have been played in London. That is not going to happen. As far as the schedule is concerned, the NFL green lights it. They will release it coming up on Saturday. It's always a big, big event. So just like the draft, the NFL is releasing. The NFL regular season schedule, whether or not that happens as planned, we'll have to wait and see. And we'll go on tonight, some very sad news tonight, and we move on to the sad news from the football world. And here in Northeast Ohio, 
The winningest coach in NFL history, Lake County native Don Shula, has died. He's a graduate of John Carroll. He played professionally with the Browns, the Colts, and the Lions before becoming the league's youngest head coach at age 33. Back in 1963, he would coach the Baltimore Colts the next year in 64 against the Browns.